Hello everyone, welcome to the Support for International Students session. Before we start, we just have a couple of housekeeping notes for you to be aware of. The event is being recorded live. There is a Q&A function running throughout the presentation, so please do submit any questions you have using the chat box to the right of your screens. We will answer as many as we can towards the end of the session. If you see a question that you would also like to know the answer to, please like it so that we can ensure the most popular questions are being answered. I'm now going to hand over to Laura Williamson and Ash Slater, who are from our International Student Centre, and Clarence Clark, a student from the USA. Hi, my name is Laura Williamson. I'm the Welfare Advisor for International Students. We have over 1,700 students from more than 100 countries and I help them to all have the best experience at Derby. I'm part of the International Student Centre where we support all of our international students by providing services like airport pickups, letters for banks, advice on student life, as well as induction activities to help you settle into the UK and social events to make friends. You'll hear from Ash later about the visa and an immigration support that we can offer you. As you can see, our International Student Centre was ranked the best of UK universities that participated in the International Student Barometer and we've been highly rated for our multicultural learning and faith support. We recommend that our students stay in halls and all of our new international students are guaranteed a place if you apply before the 31st of August this year and the 31st of July for next year. However, if it isn't for you, we do have university approved private properties that you look, can look into too. Most of our halls of residence are only a short distance from campus and within easy reach of the city centre. And we've got a free unibus, so you can easily travel between the halls, the shops, the train station and the campus sites. The rooms are grouped into flats with shared kitchens and they either have a shared bathroom or a private bathroom depending on the room but your rent is all inclusive so you've not got any separate bills to worry about and as you can see there's a lot of things that are included in your um, student living like the security so you can feel safe while they're there and uh, social activities so you can interact with other people whilst you're on site and, and make friends. Um, Whilst you're at university um, in Derby, then Derby as a city is overall a very safe city. You'll find it's got a, a lower cost of living compared to other UK cities. And we've got a good choice of bars, restaurants, shops um, and also social activities you can take part in like bowling, crazy golf, cinemas, as well as parks and art centres to visit. We have a championship football team, a cricket, county cricket team team and one of only six indoor cycling velodromes um, and if we're located, located in the centre of the UK so it's easy for you to explore the local countryside um, and other areas of the, the UK that you want to, to visit. When you start at university you're going to be assigned a personal tutor and they're here to help you support your progress on the course and any academic support you need. There's the subject librarian who can help you accessing the books with as well as reference writing and academic writing and note taking. Um, we've got a career service that can help you with careers advice, support you with preparing to get a job, for example, by helping on CVs and interview techniques. But maybe you've got some other additional needs that you have either before you arrive or whilst you're here that you want to talk to us about. Our student wellbeing team offers free and confidential support to students and that could be something like you know having difficulty sleeping or um, long-term health issues that you want to discuss. We've got an on-site doctor's surgery which is available to, to all students who are studying here to visit and um, a student money advice and rights team who can help you with financial advice and budgeting. We've also got a team of chaplains and faith consultants who are based here at, in our award winning multi faith centre at the um, Derby campus. If you do need some extra help with your English language, the Derby English Language Centre offers pre-sessional courses, maybe before you arrive and free in-sessional courses alongside your study. So they will focus on improving your academic writing, your presentation skills, your um, pronunciation and grammar to help you with your course, amongst other things. 
Um, a lot of our international students have got some concerns maybe about fitting in or making friends when you start. Our union of students has more than 60 societies that you can participate in. There is a cultural group called Derby Worldwide, which is for all international students to get together for social activities, sharing experiences. But there are also other cultural groups that you can take part in, like Chinese society, the Spanish society or other interest groups like the gaming society, the walking society and or drama society that you might want to join. Clarence will talk to you a little bit more about sports later, but we've got more than 40 sports teams from basketball to badminton, football to lacrosse, which you can participate either on a social level just to get to know other people, or you might want to uh, take part competitively in matches with other university. That's all I'm going to talk to you about for now, and I'll pass you over to Ash so he can share information about the visa support we provide. Thank you, Laura. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Ashley Slater and I am the Immigration and Visa Advisor at the University of Derby. The visa that you'll primarily obtain in order to study here will be called a Tier 4 student visa. So I can give you any manner of advice relating to Tier 4, including the rules and regulations, what documents you need to provide in your Tier 4 application. And I can also check through your application before you submit it to make sure that everything is filled in correctly before you go ahead with your application and give you general guidance on the overall application process as well. I can also give you advice on other visa options as well. So you may be thinking that you, uh, once you finish your studies, you will be looking at perhaps working in the UK. So I can give you some advice on your post-study work options as well. So this can include either the entrepreneurial visas, such as the startup visa, where if you have a business plan and you need help su with um, supporting, getting support for that business plan, then we can sponsor you for a startup visa. Or you could just go down the two year graduate route visa, which is due to come in in the summer of 2021. We hope to have more information on a more specific date on that in the coming months, but uh, that will be open for any student who completes their course during or after the summer of 2021. And so we are very excited for a return of a visa such as that, as it is very similar to the old post study work visa that you may have heard of. To help you, um, if you're an American student, you may be eligible for US federal aid. So I can give you some guidance then on your eligibility for federal aid. So this is where you have loans by, from the US government that will help pay for your course fees and your living costs. So I can help you with processing your applications for federal aid, calculating the amount of loan amounts you'll be eligible for and liaising with our finance department to ensure that these funds go towards paying your course fee and are going straight to your bank account for your living costs as smoothly as possible. So feel free to, as well to get in contact with us for any questions about that. And then finally, I can help any of our EU or EEA students who have any questions or concerns about Brexit and how their studies in the UK will look like once the UK leaves the uh, transitional period that we are currently in, it's due to end at the end of this year. So from January 2021, the uh, EU students will be subject to different rules. And so I can give you any guidance that you may require on your post Brexit options. And that includes assistance with the EU settlement scheme, which is eligible for anybody who enters the UK before the end of this year. So again, feel free to contact me for any of these issues. I'll pass you over now then to our international student, Clarence, who will speak about his uh, first hand experience as an international student. Thank you, Ash. Uh, yes, my name is Clarence Clark. I am an international student from Phoenix, Arizona, back home in the United States. I am a postgraduate student. I'm pursuing my Master's of Business Administration, more formally known as the MBA. Um, I was a sports scholar here. I received a scholarship to play American football at the university. Um, I also trialed for the soccer team, so I got to play American football uh, and soccer at the same time, and it was a blast. Um, 
I'm going to kind of I'm going to speak on the visa process that Ash just finished up with because that is very important, especially if you're from the United States coming. And that is what you need to be able to study here. And it's not a hard process, but it is uh, kind of it's just busy work. You have to keep on top of it. Um, lots of paperwork, lots of making sure that they got documents. So just make sure that you are um, steady in pursuing that, because if you are serious about coming to the University of Derby, then that will that is step number one. So make sure that you get that done. Um, I stay in a, a university accommodation. I stay on halls. I stay in the best one because it's right across the, the way from the sports center um, where the gym is, the workout center, where the field is. So I can see the field and the gym uh, from one of the windows in my room. So it's lovely. I stay right down the hill from the from the main campus. So I am pretty much where right where I need to be. Uh, if I need to go down to the city center, like Laura mentioned, there is a free there is a free bus so I can either go walk up the hill and catch a catch the bus or go down the hill the other way and, um, and catch the bus there. So very easy to move about. Uh, the International Student Center, like Laura has also mentioned, is great. They um, they post so many brochures and uh, uh, brochures and uh, pamphlets that have all of the events that are happening for the week, the month. If there's any trips that are uh, happening, uh, very good discounted trips that are uh, happening, so you can explore not only Derby but all over England, uh, and even and uh, even even outside. So that is very good. Um, there's always smiling, helpful uh, faces in the International Student Center, whether you're confused on where something is in the building or if you need to apply for something else. So uh, you definitely you have to go in there anyway to get your uh, documents approved. So you will know where that place is eventually. But uh, don't be afraid to stop in because there there are some great people in there that all that always make you feel welcome. Um, Making friends. Uh, I played on not, not one sport team, but two sports teams. So I pretty much instantly had friends and family, whether it's my teammates, because we're all competing towards the same goal. So being able to reach out, kind of connect with some of their circles um, and being an international student, people kind of know why you came to Darby. So there's always some conversation that is uh, going to happen. And if you're uh, you just need to step out of your comfort zone as well and be open to meeting new people. Uh, if you're coming International, internationally, then you have already made the first step to doing that. So just uh, don't be shy and you will uh, easily make some friends. Um, another big thing that has been great for me out here was just been the network, whether it's personally or professionally. Uh, personally, those friends, those friends and teammates that I have, I will I will always get to speak with, whether um, it was how we did during the season or what they're doing now. So I'm pretty excited about that, but also the professional uh, network as well. Uh, me being a marketing representative has got me in touch with great people that put on events like this, um, whether it's it, through the marketing scheme or just anywhere through the uh, through the university. So that has been great for me. And um, it's not it's not what you know, it's who you know. It is what you know, but uh, definitely who you know can help you get to where you want to be. So definitely keep uh, always try and um, connect with people and you know build your network uh, when you do come out to the University of Derby. Uh, to wrap up kind of what I'm doing right now currently, um, I'm COVID-19 kind of pushed back some of my deadlines for my MBA, so I'm still pursuing that. Um, I've applied the work schedule attitude to it, so I work pretty much from whether it's nine to five, 10 to 6 or something like that and kind of put a schedule on it. Um, that way I keep my sanity and kind of block out my day. Um, make sure I have time for my work and then I work out a lot, whether it's a bike, uh, a run, uh, anything else like that. So um, just to kind of keep my sanity and also through some more of those connections that I've built out here, I've, uh, I'm going to be playing with uh, Michelover FC, which is a kind of a local soccer club that is in uh, Derbyshire. So I will get to um, do that and then uh, I'm going to apply. I'm going to get in touch with Ash kind of after this event is all over with and see if I can't uh, apply for some jobs um, here in the UK as well as back home and kind of see what happens. So uh, I'm pretty excited. Thank you, Clarence. Thank you, Ash. Thank you, Laura. That was really interesting. And um, so we're going to move along now to the Q&A part of the session. Um, if you do still have a question, the, um, the Q&A is, is still open, so please post your questions on there and we'll try to cover as many as we can. So the first question that's come in is, um, do we still need to give English proficiency tests like IELTS for applying to the university if all our schooling has been done in English? Uh, Ash, maybe you could pick that one up for us, please. Uh, yeah, for, for the most part, uh, you may not need to. Um, it would depend on the 
course level that you have been um, that you have been studying in. Um, our admissions team, when they have receive your application for the course and they have all the information available to them, they can then make a more detailed decision on um, if you will be required to provide any additional English language proof. OK, thank you. Um, and just on that English language, there's a question come in. Is the English language course free? Um, I, no, I know. I, so our pre-sessional English language courses, uh, they do carry a, a cost. Uh, those costs uh, are available on our website. Um, but I believe the in-sessional um, additional help, I believe, is free of charge. I think Laura can confirm. Yeah, that's right. The in-sessional courses that you can do as part of your um, course are additional to your course and they're free. So if you're doing those, then there is no cost through them. OK, great. Thank you. Um, another question is, will someone from the university greet me at the airport? Laura, I wonder if you could answer that, please. Yeah, so under normal circumstances, yes, we will come to meet you in the airport and we provide an airport pickup service. So you, we um, get your details beforehand, you book onto it. We only run it for the first couple of days before the welcome. And then we'll take you from the airport directly to your accommodation, whether that's in halls or private accommodation. Unfortunately, this year, because of COVID, um, it's still under consideration uh, of what the, what's going to happen. But we will make sure that you've got all the details of how to get to Derby and, um, and phone number. So if you need to ask us any questions or, or ring and get any information, then you can do. Um, so, yeah, there will be airport um, support. But this year, because of the circumstances, it's just a little bit different. OK, thank you. Um, Ash, one for you about visas. How long does it take to get a visa? So uh, most appl visa applications can take about three or four weeks to process. This is basically like an average. So individual cases can be done quicker. They can take longer. There's no minimum or maximum time. Uh, officially, an application will take as long as necessary to be processed. Uh, the UK Visa Centre will sometimes have to conduct additional checks. They might want to check some documents. They want to contact some references. So maybe contact your university or your bank. So sometimes these can take you know, longer, but the average is about three or four weeks. OK, thank you. Uh, question about bank accounts. Um, how do I set up a bank account in the UK? Yeah, so this might be for me. Um, so, yeah, before you arrive in the UK, I'd, I'd definitely talk to your, your bank um, to find out about transferring money. And you can also do a little bit of investigation to the banks that are available in the UK. You won't be able to open the bank account before you arrive, but you might be able to do some of the, the pre-arrival uh, work. So investigating what kind of services that they offer. Then once you arrive, then you'll be um, you'll need to visit the branch for the bank and make an appointment with somebody to open your account. When you're there, they'll ask you for uh, proof of identity. So that will be your passport and your visa if you need one and proof of address. So normally that's when we will provide you a letter to confirm that you're a student with us after you've enrolled and you can take that with your address on um, to the bank and they'll use that to be able to open your account with you. Um, we wouldn't advise that you bring um, all the money with you in cash. We would advise you to um, bring just enough for the first week or two so that then you've got enough to be able to survive with your living costs um, and give you time to be able to open a bank account here. Um, and then you can transfer any money across. That's really for your personal security so that you can um, won't get lost or stolen. Then you, you're still able to um, get your bank account open and stay at uni. OK, great. Thank you. Um, I think this would be best answered by Clarence. Uh, what are your top tips for um, moving to the UK? What should I bring? Um, what, you should, what you should bring? I, I brought some stuff that I might not have needed because I brought like sheets. My aunt, my my auntie was worried about me having sheets. She didn't know um, what to do, but just some clothes. You're you're gonna want to bring some jacket. I had to bring I had to bring 
all of the warm clothes that I had and then purchased some out here because I'm from I'm from the desert. Phoenix, Arizona is a desert. So it's been a little bit colder out here. So I had to, you know, make sure I was adapt and it rains and, and it rains some too. So I had to buy a rain jacket, get a waterproof backpack. So if you kind of get some of those get get some of those things beforehand, then you will not have to get them when you are out here. Great, thank you. Uh, so somebody's asked, how do I find somewhere to live in Derby? Laura, I wonder if you could answer that, please. Yeah, so our student living team can offer a lot of help with that. So if you decide that maybe halls isn't for you, then you can find um, private accommodation. They've got a, an online database of all private landlords that we work with. So the City of Derby has an accreditation scheme and we as a university subscribe to that accreditation and um, check the um, accommodation as well ourselves um, through uh, feedback from other students as well as the working with the landlord and the uh, accreditation scheme just to make sure that it is going to be a good place for you to be able to live so you can feel confident that actually the, the place you're living in even though it's not halls is still going to be of a good standard and that um, you can feel safe there so it doesn't have some of the uh, things that uh, halls have so maybe that you have to pay for separate bills you have to pay for wi-fi or you have to pay for like other activities so there are benefits from living in halls in that way but if that isn't for you then there is a a, a good uh, database of places that you can find either as an individual in a shared house so you rent the room or it could be that you rent the whole um, flat or house depending on what the property is and um, one thing about our halls is that unfortunately it isn't for you can't book a room for like couples or families so it may be that private is the one you want to have instead. Mm -hmm. Okay thank you and um, so a question just come in um, as an international student, can I get a job, for example, in a restaurant where English knowledge is needed? Uh, Ash, do you want to pick that one up? Yeah, so whilst on a tier four visa, you can work, uh, you would be limited for the most part, if you're doing a degree level course, you'll be limited to 20 hours of work per week. Um, so you'd have to make sure that you do not go over those 20 hours. So there's a very strict rule in place. During um, holiday periods, so the Christmas holiday, Easter holiday, and for some students, if they have a summer break during the summer holiday as well, then you can work full time hours. You can also have a period of time after your visa expires. Sorry, after your course finishes, you have a period of time before your visa expires. This is called the wrap up period and you can work full time during that period as well between your course finishing and your visa expiring um, and you can work in nearly any any job really so that could be in a restaurant or in a bookstore or um or in a you know just pretty much any any job uh, necessary really there are some restrictions on the work you can do um i'd advise you have a look at the visa pages on our website where we have a full list of what work wouldn't be allowed as there are a few restrictions that wouldn't apply to many but you check it just in case OK, thank you. Um, so we, we've had a lot of questions. Thank you very much. I'm just going to finish on this last one. Um, I wonder if um, Clarence can answer this. How, how do you apply for a sports scholarship? Yep, so you can go online to the university website and there are many different resources and links that you could get to. Um, and then as well as the International Student Center, there are, if you go on there, you can uh, direct your way to uh, the application uh, process for a uh, sports scholarship. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, so that's all the time we have today. Thank you very much for watching. If you do want some more information, please go to our website, which is derby.ac.uk forward slash international. Or you can send us an email, um, international at derby.ac.uk, and we can try and answer any questions that you have. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you to Ash, Laura and Clarence. And we look forward to welcoming you as a student to our university very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>